Today we are going to continue our study of place value, but this time, instead of getting bigger, we're going to get smaller. We're going to take a look at decimals, and we're going to answer the questions, what happens when I divide whole numbers in a base 10 system? What's that dot thing mean? And in American money, how is that a decimal system? Well, let's find out. You know, because we've been studying place value, that if we take 100 and divide it into 10 equal parts, what we get are tens, right? So this is 0, and that's 100. We got 10, 20, 30 on up. And then I can take a 10 and divide it into 10 pieces, and then what I get are 1s. OK, so what if I need something even smaller? What if I need to take a 1 and divide it well, this is a base 10 system, and you do know your fractions. You know that 1 half is 1 divided into 2 pieces, and 1 fourth is 1 divided by 4 pieces. So what if, in a base 10 system, what I logically do? I divide it into 10 pieces. So there you are. If I take 1 and divide it by 10, which is what that says, what I get is 1 tenth. And here is this 1 right there divided into 10 pieces, or tenths. So to look at it a little more closely, here's my whole divided into 10 pieces, or tenths. And I can represent parts of that whole like that. I've got 10 tenths, but three of them are colored in, or 3 out of 10. 3 out of 10 is a fraction, right? So there's that. But I may not always want to write it as a fraction. There is another way. It's a decimal. Three tenths is going to look a little different. First of all, how many holes do I have? Well, I don't have any because I don't even fill up the whole thing. So I've got zero holes. But this little dot here, this decimal, tells me that I'm going to go smaller than a hole. I have three tenths. That's going to look like that. These both say three tenths. This says 3 tenths is a fraction. This says 3 tenths is a decimal. They mean the same quantity. 3 tenths and 0 0.3 both mean I've got 3 tenths of something. So what if I wanted to represent a different quantity? Let's say 6 tenths. So there it is represented on a grid. There it is written as a fraction. What's it going to look like as a decimal? There we go. It'll look like that. This says 6 tenths. This says 6 tenths. And just so you know, this says 6 tenths as well. If there isn't a whole number in front of my decimal, we just know that that's 0. So this says 6 tenths. This says 6 tenths. This also says 6 tenths. But what if I need something still smaller? What if I needed to take that tenth and divide it by 10. Well, what's 10 times 10? 100. Well, guess what happens when I take a tenth and divide it by 10? How many pieces will I get? I will get 100. So now I have 100 very small pieces making up my one whole. Let's take a look at some quantities. Well, here I've taken my hundredths and I filled in 23 of them. So 23 out of 100 are filled in, and that's what this fraction represents. How can I write that as a decimal? It's going to look like that. 23 out of 100 looks like decimal 2, 3. So these both say 23 hundredths. Let me put one up for you to try. This time of 100 squares, I filled in 38. 38 out of 100, or 38 hundredths. What do you think the decimal will look like? it will look like that, 0 decimal 38, or I could even just write decimal 38 and still have it say 38 hundredths, because that's what those both say. OK, let me throw something else at you now. In your notebook, you've got something that looks like this, and you're being asked to fill in 5 tenths on a tenths grid and 50 hundredths on a hundredths grid. Well, I've done that here, and you can go ahead and do the same thing in your notebook right now. And then you're going to notice something interesting. 
if I were to write the decimal form of what you're looking at. I would get this. Right here is 5 tenths. Of the 10 pieces, 5 are filled in. To write it as a decimal, it's decimal 5. Here, I've got 50 hundredths. Of the 100 boxes, 50 are filled in. And there we go, decimal 5, 0. Here's the thing. I filled in the same quantity on both of them, haven't I? So you'll notice that 5 tenths and 50 hundredths are different ways of writing the same thing. Why? Well, kind of like this. If I wanted to write a number, say in this case, 129, do I change the value of the number by putting a zero in front of it? Like that? No, I don't. 129 and 0129 represent the same quantity. I still have 100, 2 tens, and 9 ones. Putting the zero on the front of that, adding no thousands, doesn't change that. Well, decimals work the same way, but as a mirror image. If I put a zero on the end of a decimal, I don't change its value. So, I can take this quantity and put a zero behind it and I haven't changed the quantity. I could put as many zeros, this could say 0 .500 and it isn't going to change that half of it happens to be filled in. Don't believe me, take a look at this. Here's a dollar and a tenth of another one. What's a tenth of a dollar? A dime. And I would write that quantity right here like that, right? A dollar ten cents. This is one point one dollars. One and one tenth of another dollar. Okay? So is this. This is also a dollar ten cents. But this time, instead of having one dime or a tenth of a dollar, I have ten pennies or ten hundredths of a dollar. And when I go to write it, I'm going to write it the exact same way. There you go. If you look at the bottom of that page in your notebook, you're going to find three more examples. Go ahead, stop the video, write in what those values should be when written as a decimal, and we'll check. Four tenths will be written as no whole numbers, a decimal, and four. Four tenths. You could also have done just plain old decimal four, and that would have been correct too, because they represent the same thing. The next example asks you for 40 hundred, which would look like that, zero decimal four zero, or just decimal four zero, or even just decimal four, because they mean the same thing. So let's take a look at this last one, 42 hundredths. And that you'd have written as zero decimal four two, or just plain old decimal four two, and that gets the job done. Let's go to the other side of the page. And the example looks like this, and if you're on top of things, you're saying, you know, Clark, we just did that a minute ago. And you're right, we did. We have one hole divided into tenths, and six of them are filled in. What would this be as a fraction, a decimal, and word form? Go ahead and do it in your notebook, stop the video, and we'll check. There it is, there's our fractions showing six out of ten are filled in. There it is written as a decimal, six tenths, zero point six, or just plain decimal six. And there it is in word form, six tenths. If you didn't get it right in your notebook, fix that real quick. Let's try one more. This time we're looking at a hundredth grid with 58 of the little boxes filled in. So think about what it would be as a fraction, a decimal, and in word form. Stop the video, do it in your notebook. And here's what you should have. 58 out of 100 are colored in, which written as a decimal is 0 decimal 58. In a word form, it's 58 hundredths. Now, this THS is really, really important because it was just 58 hundreds, we would have 5,800. This isn't hundreds, it's just hundredths, which tells us it's a decimal. You've got two more examples to work in your notebook. Uh, they will be part of your Sophia quiz. So before we go, let's take a look at one more quick thing. What if I needed something even smaller than a hundredth? What would I do then? Well, I'd divide it by 10 again. It's a base 10 system. So if I were to take each of these hundredths boxes and divide it into 10 pieces, how many would I have here? 
Yep, a thousand. A hundred times ten, because there's a hundred boxes and ten in each, is a thousand. And so the next decimal place down is thousands. Now you might be wondering, why don't we have once? Well, think about that for a second, what you know about math. If I take two and divide it by one, what do I get? Well, two, right? I just get two back. So anytime I divide a number by one, I get the same number back thanks to the identity property. Well, that doesn't help. That doesn't divide anything. So we don't divide things by ones. We divide things by tens. And that's how I get tenths, hundreds, thousandths, ten thousandths, and so on. But I don't get ones. Because you divide a number by one, you just get that number back. So today we have answered what happens when I divide whole numbers in a base 10 system. I get decimals, I get tenths, I get hundreds, I get thousands, and so on, until they're tiny, tiny, tiny. What's that period thing mean? It's a decimal point. It separates my whole numbers from my decimal numbers. How is money a decimal system? Well, in the United States, we have single $1 bills that we divide into tenths with dimes and into hundreds with pennies, and then we combine them in all kinds of different ways. Thank you for playing along. This one's been a little long. Tomorrow we will take a look at what's in your notebook and keep moving.